I'm here again with another one of my favorite rifles. And this time we're talking about 22s. You've seen the video of my Norinco JW15. And I call that my favorite rifle. And it is. That's what I squirrel hunt with. This rifle here, I don't even know if I've shot it. I got it and I put it in the safe. You've already heard me talk about the 742 BDL, the 700, 760. Well, I wanted a whole BDL line of Remingtons, but these are hard to find, especially the older ones. Here I have a Remington 552 Speedmaster, semi-automatic. It's tube fed, and this thing will shoot 22 shorts, 22 longs, and 22 long rifles. That is usually uncommon with a semi automatic, but this one will do it. Uh, it has a case guard here, which also prevents a lot of the, you know, this is a semi automatic, so it's uh, a blowback type design. And uh, so it keeps any of the gases from getting in your face. It does have a, uh, I think this is a Simmons. I'm trying to look real quick here. I thought the name was on it. But I think this is a Simmons 3 to 9 by 40 scope. It's called the 8 point scope. And the wood. I believe is walnut. I know they made some of these with the birch, but it has no checkering uh, at all. Um, so it's not the BDL grade, it's the ADL grade. The ADL grade, I know for sure, had the walnut stock and it had checkering. Uh, the, uh, the 552 first was introduced in 1957 and is still currently produced. And uh, it's a blowback disc design, a semi-automatic rifle. And I've already told you, it shoots 22 shorts, longs, and long rifles. Uh, the 552 was manufactured from 1957 up to 1988 in a standard model, which I think that's what this is, is considered the standard model. And I think this is walnut. It just doesn't have a real glossy finish to it. And uh, in 1991, the walnut stock of the BDL grade was altered to incorporate a Monte Carlo stock. And that was so when you held it up to your cheek, you had your eye in line with the scope. Uh, that was, a lot of people complained about that. And then in 2017, they done away with the Monte Carlo, Monte Carlo stock. And what it done, it raised, you know, had a little comb higher up here on the stock, which what they were talking, what a lot of these guys was talking about was that complained was then you couldn't use the open sights. Well, of course, on this one, I can't use the open sights. I don't have a high rise mount on it. But uh, the charging handle is over here on this side. Uh, so it's out of the way when you're holding it. It's out of the way. Um, it has a push button safety. Um, the, the, this is designed a lot like the semi-automatic rifles Remington makes. It has two pins you push out and the whole trigger mechanism, hammer and all comes out for cleaning. Uh, also this one, the barrel and the tube and all can come off. You take off this screw here, slide the forearm up, and uh, I think there's another screw. I've never had this one tore all the way apart. But the barrel and the magazine tube will slide out and come completely apart and your bolt is attached you know inside the barrel and you take your bolt out and you can clean it um a lot of people i've heard watched some videos about the 552 this is like kind of like you know like i said the 
7400, 742, and the 740. <clears throat> the, uh, this one hasn't been out in the woods. Like I said, I bought it and uh, wanted, wanted to hunt with it, but I put it in the safe. And of course, like I said, I wanted a BDL grade and this was the one I found and this is what I got. Um, I may take it out squirrel hunting, maybe this year, uh, this fall. But uh, they're, they're pretty rifles and it's just part of my Remington collection. Um, I will now show you. I wasn't going to make it part of this video, but I decided to go ahead and do it. Um, this is the uh, uh, Remington 572 Fieldmaster. Okay, looks just like the 552, other than this is a pump action. Uh, the receiver is the same, looks like 750. 40, 742, 7400, 870, 1100. You've got a cross bolt safety. You have uh, two pins here that you knock out, pull the whole trigger guard system out with the hammer and everything so you can clean it. Um, the uh, barrel and the magazine tube comes off just like the 552 other than here where the wood is uh, up here the pump action you have a screw here you take loose and then you have one right here that you got to be very very careful with um, because it's fine thread it's a short screw even putting it back you don't want to torque it down because if you do you could break it you could strip it okay um, the pump action release is right here in front of the trigger. Uh, this, like I said, is the BDL. It has the high gloss uh, walnut finish with the checkering. Same on the forearm. The sights. This has a, has a ramped bead. A little gold bead right here. The rear sights you can do windage and elevation on, which you can't do on the 552. You can only do the uh, elevation. Uh, some that I have read says this is, uh, I guess, the earlier 700s. This is the type of rifle sight was on them. And also, this rifle will shoot, and I'm just going to confirm it. Yeah. This will shoot 22 shorts, 22 long, 22 long rifles. So very versatile in what you can shoot in it. Um, it has a Bushnell scope. Of course, again, low mount, so I don't use my uh, open sight. And this open sight, uh, if you can tell, is in line with the scope. But looking through the scope, it doesn't interfere. Um, but this is a Bushnell 3-9. to nine. This is not a 40. I think this is a 32. 3 by 9 by 32. I've never had this one out. When I grabbed this one and got it, it went into the safe immediately. It's never been shot by me. Um, a little history on this thing. These were introduced in 1956. And actually there was three models. It was the 572A. And uh, it was discontinued in 1988. It was uncheckered hardwood stock, no checkering or whatever, the hardwood stock. The forearm on it had no checkering, but it had grooves on both sides in the forearm for you to grip. Um, it's not like some of the gallery guns you would see that have what they call donut rings, but it did have uh, vertical grooves in the forearm. Uh, they didn't come all the way around. They were just on the sides. Um, then there was the 572 SB, which the SB stood for smooth bore. Uh, 
and just by hearing the word smooth bore, I take it no rifling. I've never seen one, never had one. And that was started in uh, 1961, and they discontinued that in 79. Uh, this one is the BDL, of course, and it was introduced in 1966, and is currently still produced. Um, this one I've aged, or went and checked, uh, because you can look uh, on the barrel on the left side here and there's proof marks and stamps on it. And there's two letters some may have three but uh, they have two letters and this one was made in March that's definite it was either in 1966 or 1993 was when this was made um, Knowing that the BDL started in 1966, I would say this was probably the 1993 model I've got here. Because it's in too good of a shape. I just don't believe it's that old. But 1993, it's an old gun. The 552, it was made in April. That much I know positively. But it could have been in 1976 or 1988. And, you know, looking at the BDL, or the 552 ADL here, here's both of them side by side, and they look just the same, other than this one's the pump, and this one is the automatic, semi-automatic. Uh, Got to make sure I get that right. It's semi-automatic. These are not, this is not a full automatic gun, so it's semi-automatic. Us old-timers, we always said automatic until the, activists got started and, you know no, I'm not going to get on that subject but this is a semi-automatic and this could have been made like I said in 1976 or 1988 um, so you know, that's only a 12 year difference there so I'm not sure this could be a 1988 model but the uh, this one here is my pride and joy because, like I said, it goes along with the 742, the 760, and the 700 BDLs. Uh, maybe one day I'll come across a, uh, a uh, 552 BDL. Now, both of these rifles, the 552 and the 572, at one time, uh, I might have already covered it, 1991, they put a Monte Carlo stock on these. And of course, you know, that gives you a cheek rest and a higher comb. And that was to offer better sighting capability through your scope if you used a high rise mount. Now, if you used a high rise mount, and that was the complaints, I think I've already covered it, that was the complaints they were getting that then you couldn't get down to use your open sights because of the Monte Carlo stock. So in 2017, they just discontinued the Monte Carlo stock altogether. So, uh, so if you find one of uh, the seven, the 572 or the 552 with the Monte Carlo stock, then you've got something that's rare nowadays. Because, like I said, these are still in production, but they don't have the Monte Carlo stock. So that covers my Remington line of rifles. I may do the shotguns, but everybody's seen 1100, everybody's seen an 870. Uh, there, there's variations of the 870. Like I said, I've got the 870 Wingmaster. It's a Magnum. I've got the 870 uh, Express with the parkerized barrel and choke tubes. And then I have the 870 that has the rifled slug barrel on it for deer hunting. So, uh, I don't know if I'll do those or not. Everybody's seen those. There's tons of videos on YouTube. But, uh, you know, I'm doing, doing these videos because I get some content out while we're not in the hunting season anymore. I mean, we got over 500 videos on our channel. And I have seen on the channel that our hunting videos and especially our deer camp videos 
get us the most views on the channel. Uh, I've done some kayaking videos, they got some views. Done two or three fishing videos. Big Al and I went trout fishing. Uh, done some fishing up to Summersville. Done some fishing at Plum Orchard out of kayak. They don't get the views that the hunting videos do. And that's, that'll happen with everybody's channel. But our channel is more the uh, hunting. So with that, I'm going to keep getting some content out there. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. And uh, I am going back and looking at the other videos, seeing what we can do better. And seeing what's bringing more viewers, more interest to our channel. We appreciate everybody who watches, everybody who um, comments, and please share the videos. Get it out there. Um, so with that, I'm just going to say appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Make sure you hit that thumbs up, you know, the like button. Uh, that gets us out there. Uh, and uh, as we're fond of saying, we'll see you in the woods. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.